Live from WRAL News Headquarters in Raleigh, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. At 8 o'clock, Sky 5, live over breaking news in Raleigh, where down power lines have closed a section of Western Boulevard. I'll show you the backups and how to get around them. And it's a beautiful morning in our WRAL gardens. I'll show you why we want you to come here this afternoon. Today, the FAA will be in Chatham County to investigate after a plane landed on a major highway. What they are hoping to learn about why that plane had to make that emergency landing. We're following lots of excitement here on NC State's campus ahead of the men and women competing in the final four. We'll show you where you can watch these games. A lot of excitement. The women are playing today. We're all in our NC State <laughs> red to support them. Oh my goodness, what a day it's going to be in the men play tomorrow. We'll have you covered on all of that. Thanks for joining us on your Friday. I'm Michelle McConaughey. I'm Jeff Hogan. Thanks for making us part of your Friday here as we, uh, we just paint the whole town red. The here. whole town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun because we're going to get the gardens to be red today yeah. as well. We'll explain that and how that's going to happen. Elizabeth Gardner out on the WRL weather patio. Good morning. Good morning. It is chilly. I am definitely glad my WRL jacket is red. We want you to come out in your red today starting at noon on through the afternoon for a special event here called Turn the Gardens Red. I'll tell you what, the gardens right now are yellow, white, pink, and red. They're so pretty right now, but it is chilly. Our temperature 43 degrees and the triangle right now our wind is fairly light. We check out temperatures across the region. We're still looking at 30s up in Roxburgh at 36. It's 42 up in South Hill, 46 in Fayetteville, 44 in Clinton. So it's a, I tell you, it's a chilly start. You know, it was a windy day yesterday, and so we have dry conditions. We have two counties that are under a high fire danger today. That's going to be Person County and, uh, and Orange County. So in those places, you're encouraged not to do any outdoor burning. Later this afternoon, the wind does pick up. We're going to see gusts up to 20, 25 miles per hour out of the northwest, which helps to bring those cool temperatures in. And of course, uh, be a part of turning the garden red. Start Starting at noon, we invite you out to our gardens wearing your NC State red. We're going to have a celebration here with a lot of fun treats for folks who are all dressed in red. Our temperature at 4 o'clock, 61. That'll be our high temperature for the day. And, of course, between now and then, we'll start to creep on up through the uh, 40s into the 50s. Expect mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies today. Now, it's a cold night uh, ahead. We have a frost advisory in effect for most of the area for tonight and tomorrow morning. I'll show you how cold it will be as you head out early tomorrow morning. Coming up. Elizabeth, it is just about 8.03 now, and we are following breaking news in Raleigh. Downed power lines have closed a section of Western Boulevard between the Beltline and Method Road. Sky 5 over the scene right now showing that uh, situation. This is not a crash. Raleigh police say they're not sure exactly how those power lines came down, but they're waiting on Duke Energy to show up at the scene there. All of that traffic on Western Boulevard on that uh, westbound side heading away from the NC State campus being diverted onto Method Road, which is a two-lane road. It gets very congested. And then on the Beltline, you're seeing some heavy backups because all of the eastbound traffic coming in from the west side of Raleigh is getting diverted on uh, western out to 440 eastbound. So very heavy traffic on 440 east this morning coming in from I-40. You can see there where Raleigh police there, that diverging diamond interchange, have closed the inbound lanes and all the traffic's heading up the ramp there uh, to move on out toward Hillsborough Street. When I take you back to the map, show you the extent of the delays. The heavy delays on 440 eastbound began all the way back around the I-40 interchange. It's going to take you at least six additional minutes to make that trip up to Wade Avenue this morning. Best alternate route right now is to pick up Hillsborough Street or Wade Avenue and then from he there head back down Gorman Street toward Western Boulevard. However, note some very heavy delays showing up on Gorman this morning, so you need to be patient making that trip through the western part of the NC State main campus. We're going to get some more details about exactly when they hope to have all of that reopened. Listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh for updates. Around the rest of the triangle right now, we're looking okay on our major routes. Just getting reports of a crash on 64 at Lake Pine Drive there between Cary and Apex, seeing some pretty heavy delays in both directions. A historic season for NC State basketball. It hits the grandest of stages tonight in sports. And the Wolfpack women chip off with South Carolina 7 o'clock tonight at the Final Four. And then less than 24 hours after that, the men have a Final Four date of their own with Purdue. WRL's Monica Casey is at the Tally Student Union on NC State's campus this morning. Monica, Wolfpack Nation's getting hyped about this. You may be at the, the highest part of it on campus there. 
Yeah, Jeff, the excitement is building here, even just throughout the morning. You'll remember earlier this season, NC State asked, why not us? Now with the men and women competing in the Final Four, they are asking, why not both? This is the kind of excitement we have been seeing all week. We have followed lines on and off campus for fans to meet NC State players. And Wolfpack Outfitters has, of course, been packed. We spoke with Jennifer Gilmore. She tells us the hard work by these teams to get to these two Final Four games have gotten generations of fans excited. Not only did the women's team show up, but the men's team showed up too. And I think that's one of the most fun things about being a Wolfpack fan is that you just never know what you're going to get. While the women are playing in Cleveland tonight and the men in Phoenix tomorrow, there will be lots of activity here on campus too. There will be watch parties on Stafford Commons outside Tally Student Union both nights. There will also be plenty of people watching these games off campus. There will be a family-friendly watch party on Hillsborough Street hosted by Mitch's Tavern. And you can see over here behind me some setup is already underway. You know, that game is not until tonight. But people are out here this early getting excited, setting up over here here on Stafford Commons. Now inside the student union as well, the Mixed Mornings team is here hosting a live radio show and they want to see your Wolfpack pride. So come on out and meet them as well here this morning. In Raleigh, Monica Casey, WRAL News. And the Wolfpack women have a big task at hand tonight as they square off with undefeated South Carolina. WRAL's Brett Neese is with the team in Cleveland where the Wolfpack say they're ready to prove they belong. Good morning, everyone from inside Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. This time we are set for a big day. The final four, it's finally here. And the NC State Wolfpack are ready to take on top ranked and undefeated South Carolina. They did their final prep work yesterday. Now they are just awaiting the big moment to step out on this court. The players tell me they believe they can hang with this South Carolina team, even if they are outsized. It's really cool to see that we adjust very well. I mean, um, they say when you come in the gym, shoot or shoot. So um, just to see our guards adjust well to that and shot pretty well this morning. Um, but I mean, the main focus is defense and rebounding in this game. So working on that a lot. I'll have complete coverage of Final Four game day from Cleveland, both before and after the game on our later newscast. In Cleveland, Brett Neese, WRL News. And the Wolfpack men say Purdue tomorrow night. They'll play Purdue tomorrow night in the Final Four. In 10 minutes, the support they're getting from legendary NC State teams from the past as they make history of their own. And we're just throwing it out there for you. We'd love your help turning the WRAL Gardens red today. Come out to the WRAL Azalea Gardens from noon to 6.30 at any point. Wear your red to support NC State men's and women's basketball on their historic Final Four journeys. The gardens are in full bloom right now. There could be some special prizes out there for those who show their pack pride the best. Stop by today with your family and help us turn the gardens red. And today, federal investigators will be in Chatham County. They'll be looking at a plane that made an emergency landing on US-1 in the middle of traffic yesterday afternoon. Amazingly, nobody was hurt. Nick Perlin is at that scene this morning in the WREL breaking news tracker. Nick, we know the pilot had to make that emergency landing because of some sort of mechanical error. And that landing was made at around 420 yesterday afternoon. And as you can see behind me, that plane is still here along with the state trooper. It's, we're still trying to figure out when exactly we'll see this plane uh, be moved. But I do want to show you this video from uh, yesterday to give you a better idea of what this scene looked like when that plane did crash. We're told the plane clipped two vehicles before it finally hit the ground. Eyewitnesses tell WREL they saw the plane flying very close to the ground. Now, according to Jim Krause, an aviation expert, this plane is a two-seat plane and was sold as a kit, meaning anyone can build and buy it. Of course, all planes need to be inspected by the FAA before they can be flown. But Krause also commended the pilot for their quick thinking in avoiding a major disaster. Like I said, the FAA will be investigating this, but we can see this plane here on the side of US-1 here in Chatham County for hours. It's still unclear when they will pick up that plane. When they do, though, we'll be the first to tell you. Reporting live in Chatham County, Nick Perlin, WRL News.
Dick's Park will be closed to the public starting tonight. That is so crews can get ready for the start of the Dreamville Festival as we count it down just a little over a day from now till the gates open for that huge show noon tomorrow for that. If you want Dreamville merchandise, though, you can pick that up downtown today. The Dreamville pop-up shop on Southwest Street is open from noon to 7 today. You can get exclusive new merchandise as well as classic Dreamville goodies. There are other events happening around Raleigh today ahead of Dreamville's kickoff. At 10 this morning, there's a yoga session happening on NC State's campus. Amazon Music will present Dreamville Public Access from 11 a.m. until 10 o'clock tonight at Cam Raleigh. And Amazon Music also presents Gold Mouth Garage with loot from 1 to 8 p.m. today on South Harrington Street. It's a free block party with DJs, car show, and food vendors. So much going on. Some incredible moments right here. Caught on camera, a mother jumped into action to save her six-year-old son who went into cardiac arrest during a baseball game. We'll hear from her on what those terrifying moments were like for her and her child. And a biased test kept thousands of black people from getting a kidney transplant, but now that's changing. Coming up, we'll hear from a woman who finally got the call she'll have a transplant this summer. And it's a chilly start here on the WRAL patio. We do have a frost advisory that's in effect for tonight. I'll let you know if there's anything you need to be doing in your garden tonight coming up. Eight fifteen is the time right now on our Friday morning. We have some Carolina blue skies right there above Franklin Street in Chapel Hill. This live, beautiful look from our WR Live Cam Network. Right outside the studio here, Elizabeth Gardner on the WRAL patio right now, taking a look at beautiful gardens behind you. Gonna be a good day, but chilly out there for sure at the start. Oh, it is chilly this morning. We did dip into the 30s just briefly a couple of hours ago. Now we're starting to see the temperatures warm up with all this sunshine. This is going to be a very busy place, not just today, but all weekend long with so many people uh, in town for uh, Dreamville. We have uh, uh, senior and junior proms this weekend, some weddings. And look at this, just a gorgeous view of the gardens. It is in full bloom. What we want you to do is come visit us at noon today. From noon to 630, we want to turn the gardens red with everybody showing up in their NC State red to support the team as it heads to the final fours, both of them. All right, let's take a look at satellite and radar. We have a trough that's moving across the mountains right now. It may bring a little bit of light snow there, but it's not going to bring any rain to us. What it will do is give us an extra push of some chilly temperatures, so we're not going to see our temperatures warming up anytime soon. If you're coming out to help us turn the gardens red, our temperature at lunchtime will be in the mid-50s. We'll see a high of 61 and then at 6 o'clock back down to 58. So it'll be cool out here, but the bright skies will make it feel not so bad. We have a frost advisory in effect for tonight. We take a look at the temperatures uh, in our northern counties, looking at 35 degrees up in Clarksville, 33 in Roxborough, 36 in Lewisburg. Now you'll notice widespread, these temperatures are not, you know, in the upper 20s to low 30s. This is not necessarily something that is going to affect your backyard garden, but the farmers are going to be looking closely. We've got strawberries out right now, as well as peaches and some other uh, crops that are just starting to, uh, to come out with some tender vegetation. So uh, the farmers are going to be looking closely at those temperatures for tonight, which is why that frost advisory is in effect. It's going to be a cool Dreamville, not just like cool, but like cool temperature wise. 62 on Saturday, mostly sunny, lots of sunshine both days, 67 degrees on Sunday. So it should be beautiful for that and uh, not too wet. Now, everybody's looking forward, I think, to the eclipse on Monday. There's been a lot of talk about the fact that along the path of totality, there's going to be some cloud cover. There's going to be a system bringing some clouds, especially to Texas and parts of the Midwest get up into Ohio, which is the closest location to North Carolina. And it looks like maybe we're seeing a little better chance of clear skies. And then up into the Northeast, that's where it looks like it may be the most clear and the best view in terms of the weather. Uh, around here, we'll see about a 78% coverage of the eclipse at about be 78% of totality, which means we'll still get to see some of it. Make sure you have your glasses ready because we'll see partly cloudy skies. We'll take a look at future cast and Definitely seeing that band of rain across Texas up through parts of the Midwest. And then behind that, we're going to see a cold front coming through. That's going to bring us our best next best chance of some rain by Thursday. Again, we're going to be turning the garden red this afternoon with some cool temperatures. We'll stay dry through Dreamville. And then next week, our temperatures are back into the 70s for highs.
It is 8:18. Still following this breaking news in Raleigh. Just got an update from Raleigh police saying that Western Boulevard still is closed. They're urging you to find alternate routes there as you head through West Raleigh, all because of downed power lines. The road is closed between I-440 and Method Road right now. Sky 5 is flying over that scene, and they have they have moved up to the Hillsborough Street exit. A lot of that traffic that was coming inbound on Western Boulevard is being diverted onto 440 eastbound and trying to make their way back to Hillsborough Street. From there, they can pick up Gorman Street and head back toward Western. But you can see some very heavy ramp delays there as a lot of extra traffic gets funneled through the west side of Raleigh. We'll take you back to the map and show you the best alternate routes to get around all of this. Those backups on 440 eastbound between I-40 and Wade Avenue will add about five minutes to your overall commute through there. And then once you uh, try to get back to Western Boulevard from Hillsborough Street, that's going to be pretty tough because Gorman Street's getting very badly backed up in both directions. Raleigh police say they're still waiting on Duke Energy to head out there to the scene. They're not sure why those power lines came down. It's probably going to be a fairly extensive process to get those lines back up and get Western Boulevard reopened. So just need to keep that in mind as we head through the morning. Of course, you can listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh. We'll let you know when things start to clear up out there. Also, got a report of a serious crash between Cary and Apex out on 64 at Lake Pine Drive with some heavy delays in both directions this morning. A mom is sharing her story about saving her son's life. Her six-year-old went into cardiac arrest after he was hit by a baseball at a Little League game. Here's what happened. The baseball hit her little boy. He collapsed to the ground, and his dad ran from the dugout onto the field and immediately knew something was wrong. That's when mom, who happens to be a registered nurse, sprinted out onto that field to call and called 911 and then jumped into action. I was just assessing the medical situation, probably a minute and a half into CPR. I kind of looked at his face and I was like, this is my baby. Like, this shouldn't be happening at a baseball game for a six and seven year old. Now, as parents, certainly you can understand uh, she was on a mission to save her little boy and to see him in that condition. So glad he's okay. Well, the NC State men face another huge challenge when they play Purdue in the Final Four tomorrow night. But the Wolfpack have a history of overcoming the odds, and that's not just this season. WRL's Pat Welter and Casey Hintz are in Phoenix with the Wolfpack as they follow in the footsteps of legendary teams of the past. Well, it has been a long time since Raleigh has been at the center of college basketball. You could say the NC State men's basketball team has been living in the past for quite some time. I know when we first got to this market, one of the first things you hear about is that 1974 team playing in arguably the greatest conference championship game ever. In this year's ACC championship, not too bad either. I remember being there with you, and what was the first thing that came to mind? It feels a lot like 1983. It was a great comparison then, and now it's almost like the ghost of Jim Valvano is watching over them. At NC State, 1974 and 1983 are always top of mind. Both teams have celebrated 50th and 40th anniversaries the last two years. So they've been around this team, and for Kevin Keats, he's got legends like David Thompson texting him during this run. When the GOAT, and when the GOAT is sending you pictures and he's got why not us on it, you got to believe in that stuff, and you know we get those pictures. And uh, but they've been great. You know, I, big brothers, godfathers, whatever you want to call them, they've been great for our team. You're in the opportunity to have your own um, recognition, to have your own, uh, you know, opportunity to go and make history. It, it's something I special. It's something I value. Now I'm gonna say it again. These guys expect to be here. I know a lot of people don't want to believe it, but they feel this is no fluke. They expect to be here at the Final Four, Pep. And look, they're in the same conversation as 1974 and 1983, but to be on the same level, they've got to win. But they've won nine elimination games in a row. What's two more? Back to you guys in Raleigh. A biased blood test has kept thousands of black people from getting kidney transplants, but now that is changing. A national mandate now requires thousands of black patients to be prioritized on transplant lists because of racially biased results from a blood test. The test overestimated how well black people's kidneys function. That often resulted in patients being put on the transplant list years later than they should have been. Jasmine Evans is one of the thousands of patients prioritized now by this new rule. She's grateful and says the fight is not over. I think it represents hope. It represents reconciling 
in a lot of ways. But I also see that the fight is not over yet. There are thousands of Black Americans that are still waiting for organ donations across the board. Experts say some labs still use the tests, so doctors should keep an eye out for new patients to make sure they are getting proper care. It's a huge weekend for both NC State men's and women's basketball teams as both are heading to the Final Four. We'll tell you where you can go cheer on the Wolfpack. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Friday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. We're dealing with a closure on Western Boulevard. Brian Schrader is going to walk us through that and how we can get around it. Yeah, breaking news. Downed power lines have closed a section of Western Boulevard between 440 and Method Road. Raleigh police at the scene waiting on Duke Energy crews to get out there. This was not a crash. They're not sure how those power lines and utility lines came down. Here's a live look from our tower camera here at the studio on Western at Avon Ferry looking back toward Method Road. All that outbound Western Boulevard traffic is being diverted onto Method Road. Inbound traffic is being diverted onto 440 eastbound. That's adding up to some pretty significant delays there between Western and Hillsborough Street. About a three-minute backup. Head up to Hillsborough Street, then take Gorman Street back to Western. It's a chilly start here on the WRL patio right here in the gardens behind me. Looking gorgeous. We take a live look at what's happening there in Sanford this morning. We're seeing clear skies in most places, but it's chilly. Temperatures are mainly in the mid to upper 40s right now, and we will be on our way to a cool afternoon. We want you to help us turn the gardens red. Come in your best NC State gear and help us celebrate starting at noon all the way through 6 o'clock. Noontime temperature in the mid 50s. We'll see a high this afternoon of 61. The countdown is on for the NC State Final Four games. Tonight, the women play against South Carolina. Tomorrow night, the men's team tips off against Purdue. Big watch parties are happening tonight and tomorrow night on campus. And coming up next for us on Fox 50, Mix 101.5 is joining us live from the Tally Student Center as they get fans excited for the Final Four. And coming up next on Today, the world's youngest mentalist performs live in Studio 1A. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Breaking news this morning, a section of Western Boulevard is closed right now because of down power lines. I'll show you the backups and how to get around them. And it's a chilly morning here on the patio, taking a look at the gardens, which is going to be a place where we're celebrating NC State this afternoon. I'll show you coming up. And the countdown to the Final Four is on, and NC State fans are getting excited. The watch parties the university plans to hold so fans can watch the historic games together. We are all excited this morning. Everybody's excited. We've got our red on to support NC State men's and women's games tonight and tomorrow night. We have you covered on everything you need to know. Thanks for sticking with us on your Friday morning. I'm Michelle McConaughey. And I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, thanks for keeping us here on uh, this Friday. It's a beautiful Friday, sunshine-wise. Mm -hmm. A little cold a little outside. Chilly. But yeah. uh, Elizabeth Gardner sporting the red. The hype <laughs> continues from the WRL weather patio with chilly temperatures. Yes, temperatures are in the 40s right now as you're heading out, but you can see all the sunshine. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful day. Temperatures are going to start to warm up, and this place is going to be hopping this afternoon. The gardens are absolutely beautiful in full bloom right now. We want you to come out wearing your red and help us turn the gardens red. We'll talk more about it in just a second. Right now, 43 degrees is our temperature out here. Our winds are light, and we're looking at low to mid 40s really across the viewing area right now. We do have high fire danger at just two of our counties, Person County and Orange County. That's where we could have conditions that uh, would allow fires to spread quickly, so you're encouraged not to do any outdoor burning there today. You know, it was a windy day yesterday. We're going to see some gusty conditions again today. Uh, gusts at about 20 to 25. Yesterday, we had some gusts uh, over 30, so winds may be slightly calmer, but it's still going to feel breezy. All right, we're turning the gardens red starting at noon. We want you to come out in your best NC State gear. We're going to have music, lots of fun activities for you up until 6 or 630. It's going to be 
cool though as things kick off at noon looking at 56 degrees and we'll see a high of 61 this afternoon across the viewing area we're going to see plenty of sunshine and a cool afternoon we'll see temperatures dropping back into the 50s this evening we do have a frost advisory that's in effect for tonight i'll show you how chilly it will be as you head out saturday morning coming up Breaking news here at 832, Elizabeth, we still have a section of Western Boulevard closed in West Raleigh between the Beltline and Method Road, all because of downed power lines. We've been watching from our Skycam here on the top of the tower at the TV station on Western Boulevard, looking back toward Method Road, and they've been diverting outbound traffic on Western onto Gorman Street and Method Road this morning. Inbound traffic is being diverted at the Beltline, so we have a lot of additional traffic on 440 eastbound heading up toward Hillsborough Street. It's adding about three minutes to your overall commute from I-40 up toward Wade Avenue. Best alternate route to get around this closure this morning is going to be using Hillsborough Street out to Gorman Street and then Gorman Street back down to Western Boulevard. Uh, again, this was not a crash that caused these p power lines and other utility lines to come down. Raleigh police say they're not sure exactly what caused it, but they're waiting on Duke Energy to uh, show up out there to begin those repairs. We will update you through the morning as we find out more about what's going on there. Still tracking a crash over in Cary on 64 at Lake Pine Drive. It looks like they have made a little progress getting some of the eastbound lanes on 64 reopened, but we're still seeing some heavy delays on westbound 64 heading away from US-1 back toward Lake Pine Drive. As you're heading out, remember, listen to us on the radio at 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham for our live news, weather, and traffic alerts. I have another update coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Brian. The countdown is on to NC State's final four games. Tonight, the women play against South Carolina, and that game tips off in just over 10 hours. Tomorrow night, the men's team takes on Purdue. Wolfpack Nation will gather for watch parties here in the Triangle for all of the team's big moments. As WRL's Monica Casey shares, the campus is going to be the center for the madness. Excitement is building here on NC State's campus. You'll remember earlier this year, NC State asked, why not us? Now with the men's and women's teams competing in the Final Four, they are asking, why not both? This is the kind of excitement we have seen all week. We have followed lines on and off campus of excited fans meeting NC State players, and Wolfpack Outfitters has been packed. We spoke with Jennifer Gilmore. She tells us the hard Hard work by these teams to get to these two Final Four games have gotten generations of fans excited. We are so busy. Uh, we've got alums that are coming back to visit. We've got uh, student potential students and their families coming to visit. It's just a great time to be at NC State. While the women are playing in Cleveland tonight and the men in Phoenix tomorrow, there will be tons of activity here on campus, too. There will be watch parties on Stafford Commons outside of the Tally Student Union both nights. There will also be plenty of people watching these games off campus. There will be a family-friendly watch party on Saturday night on Hillsborough Street that is hosted by Mitch's Tavern. In Raleigh, Monica Casey, WRL News. Well, Pack women are ready for the challenge of facing the top seed overall undefeated South Carolina. NC State has put together an amazing run this season after they were unranked in the preseason. They're preparing for the biggest game yet, telling their naysayers, we told you so. We're going to crash the party. I mean, we're here. We've proven that we're supposed to be here. Um, we've made it here for a reason, so why not a couple more? Hey, why not? The Wolfpack will tip off with South Carolina tonight at 7, and WRL's Brett Neese is in Cleveland with the team. He'll have reports before and after tonight's game right here on WRL. And the NC State men, as an 11 seed, are tied for the lowest seed to ever make the Final Four. They'll face Purdue tomorrow night. But this Wolfpack team has a history of overcoming the odds, just like the legendary teams that came before them. The national championship teams in 1974 and 1983 are etched in the history books. Those teams celebrated 50th and 40th anniversaries within the past year. Coach Kevin Keats says the support of legends, including David Thompson, helps motivate this current Wolfpack team. When the GOAT, and when the GOAT is sending you pictures and he's got why not us on it, you got to believe in that stuff. And, you know, we get those pictures. And, uh, but they've been great. You know, I, big brothers, godfathers, whatever you want to call them, they've been great for our team. NC State plays Purdue in the Final Four tomorrow night at 6.09. WRL has you covered. Pat Welter and Casey Hintz are in Phoenix with the men's team as they look to add another chapter 
to their magical run. NC State fans are so pumped for both teams' historic Final Four matchups. Mix 101.5 is helping them celebrate this morning. And in 10 minutes, Kyle Smelzer will join us live from the Tally Student Union over there as they are kicking off a fun event for fans today. A man is in the hospital after a fight involving several people in downtown Raleigh. Police responded to calls of a fight at the Morse Square bus station just before 10 o'clock last night. This is video from the WREL breaking news tracker. Police found a man suffering from puncture wounds, but it's not clear where the injuries came from. Four people were detained. The investigation is ongoing. Today, federal investigators will be in Chatham County to examine a plane, this one, that landed on US-1. The emergency landing happened in the middle of traffic Thursday afternoon. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Nick Perlin is there in the WRL breaking news tracker this morning. That plane actually hit a couple of cars on the way down as that pilot tried to get it down safely. Nick. I'll give you a couple of details. It happened yesterday afternoon, about 420 or so. Got it down onto the highway. There was some sort of a mechanical error that uh, made that plan, uh, made that plane need to get down as quickly as possible. It was very near an airport as well, but nobody on the ground was hurt. The pilot was not hurt uh, in putting that plane down on the ground. The NTSB will be on site today, the FAA as well. They're continuing uh, to investigate what's happening there. Also, as uh, we follow breaking news here, uh, we can send it to Ken Smith and the Barra Life Center. Uh, Jeff, uh, we're following some breaking news right now. Sky 5 is over the scene. We're having a little difficult time trying to see for, uh, Sky 5 right now, but it's up already. Uh, it's a situation where Sky 5 is over this area. Let me get behind the camera and show you what I'm talking about um, for Sky 5. You can see it right there. Uh, Sky 5 is over this situation that's happening. We, we know that uh, there's a heavy police presence in this area. We're asking questions in terms of exactly what's going on. Uh, we do know that, um, and that's the incorrect banner right there, if you could take that down. Uh, but uh, again, we're working with Sky 5 to figure out exactly what's going on there. You can see there's a heavy police presence. We've got a couple of tips we're trying to work on. As soon as we get any more information, we'll let you know. Ken, thanks. Dix Park will be closed to the public starting tonight. Tomorrow, it will look like Dreamville Fest is back on again. Thousands will be coming to the park like this, coming to the park to enjoy the shows. Your last chance to get some last-minute merchandise as fans can stop by a Dreamville pop-up shop in downtown Raleigh, offering exclusive new merch as well as Dreamville staples. That is open from noon until 7 p.m. tonight on Southwest Street. And some other events happening around Raleigh today ahead of Dreamville's kickoff. At 10 o'clock this morning, a yoga session happening on NC State's campus. Amazon Music will present Dreamville Public Access. That's from 11 a.m. to 10 tonight at Cam Raleigh. Amazon Music also presents Gold Mouth Garage with loot from 1 to 8 today on South Harrington Street. It's a free block party with DJs, a car show, and food vendors. Still ahead for us, we're getting a sneak peek at the Wolfpack's NCAA locker rooms. A look at some of the swag players received when they got to Phoenix and Cleveland. Plus, Chick-fil-A is testing a new menu item right here in the Triangle. And we'll tell you when you can try out the fast food restaurant's new sandwich. Taking a look at what's happening out here at the gardens. Uh, I'm live here on our WRAL patio and behind me, the gardens are in full bloom. We want you to come out and celebrate the NC State Wolfpack by turning the garden red. Come in wearing all of your NC State gear starting at noon and it will last all afternoon until around 630 uh, with music and all sorts of fun, especially for folks who are really showing their pack pride. 43 degrees is our temperature right now. Our dew point is 32, so we do have a nice dry air mass in place, but it does remain a cool day today. If you're headed out right at noon, temperatures will still be in the mid 50s. Again, we do climb into the low 60s for highs this afternoon. We'll see the temperatures dropping on through the 50s again as we get into the evening. Official highs today, 61 in Raleigh, 60 in Durham and 64 degrees in Fayetteville. Those temperatures are a little cooler than normal and it will be a bit breezy like it was yesterday, but not quite as windy. We'll see gusts this afternoon, 20 to 25 miles per hour, potentially 
potentially some 30 mile per hour gusts in a few places. A lot of folks will be headed to some of the outdoor viewing parties for today, starting with the NC State women in the final four at seven o'clock, 56 degrees under partly cloudy skies. And tomorrow, uh, some outdoor viewing parties for the men's team at 6 p.m., 59 degrees with plenty of sunshine. So weather looks good for being outside this weekend. We do have a frost advisory that's in effect for tonight. We take a look at some of the temperatures you'll see as you're headed out the door tomorrow morning. One of the coldest will be in Roxborough at 33, 36 in Lewisburg, and 36 degrees up in Roanoke Rapids. We head down to the south, and temperatures there are also mid to upper 30s, looking at 37 in Southern Pines, 35 in Sanford, 39 over in Clayton. Now you may say, well, okay, these temperatures are not necessarily down to freezing, but a lot of the rural low-lying areas can see temperatures that drop on down to 32, and you may not need to do anything to protect the flowers in your backyard, but farmers will be watching very closely for these temperatures. We've got strawberries out, uh, peaches blooming, and they'll be watching those temperatures closely. We'll see another chilly, chilly morning on Sunday at 37, and then our temperatures warm from the 40s into the 50s as you're heading out the door, getting into early next week. We want you to help us turn the gardens behind me red today. Again, from noon to 6.30, come out and celebrate our Wolfpack Dreamville. Weather looks good for that. Mostly sunny skies, but it will be cool. A high of 62 on Saturday, 67 Sunday. Our weather for our partial solar eclipse that we'll see here in our viewing area looks nice on Monday, 73. Back to you. All right, Elizabeth, here at 846. I want to update you about that closure on Western Boulevard. Power lines down, not because of a crash. Raleigh Police still investigating. That apparently closed between 440 and Method Road. And uh, at this point, a lot of the delays that we've been tracking on 440 eastbound have eased up considerably, measuring just a one-minute backup overall. A lot of people have taken 440 eastbound up to Hillsborough Street, and then Hillsborough Street back to Gorman to access Western on the other side of that closure. Still working to get more details about that. We'll have an update for you coming up in just a few minutes. Good news over in Cary. That earlier crash at 64 at Lake Pine Drive has cleared. Traffic now has returned to normal. Do want to give you a heads up about a major road closure over the weekend. On the north side of Fuquay Verena, Highway 401 or Fayetteville Road is going to be closed right around the 540 work zone area. It's going to close tonight at 9 o'clock between 1010 Road and Donnybrook Road. It's going to stay closed all weekend, reopening in time for the Monday morning commute. Lake Wheeler Road is the detour they have set up there. Expect some heavy traffic. That's just a two-lane highway, and uh, we're probably going to see some heavy backups there as you head through the weekend. So be prepared for that, heading between Fuquay and Garner. We continue to follow breaking news here in the WRA Live Center. Uh, we're following a, a report of what we're listening to on the radio traffic. We can confirm that there's been some type of shooting in a neighborhood in Franklin County. Sky 5 has been over that scene for the last uh, uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, we're having a little trouble with that shot. That's why you're not seeing it. But here's the information. Some type of shooting happened in a neighborhood in Franklin County. As soon as we get any more information, we'll keep you updated here, especially in the next hour of news here right here on Fox 50. Uh, Ken, thanks for that. Excitement continues to build all across Raleigh, NC State's campus, both men's and women's teams getting ready for the historic Final Four matchups here tonight. Yeah, Mix 101.5's Kyle Smelser is at the Tally Student Union getting students hyped up for all of the big games. Kyle, how's the energy out there? Hello, Brian Lord reporting oh. for Kyle Smelser oh. here at Tally <laughs> Student Brian. Union. Uh, the energy's incredible hi the, <laughs> the energy is incredible here i mean after all uh you know the student use paper had this morning why not both and that's sort of the hope and the anticipation here at tally student union students woke up today they're walking through with smiles they have their airpods out because they actually want to talk to other students about how excited they are just the atmosphere you can feel it it's bubbling and it's not just students here today this is a transgenerational celebration. It's students, their parents are here, their grandparents are here soaking in the atmosphere because this right now, what we're experiencing is unlike anything that's ever happened at NC State. Two teams in the Final Four, two possible national champions after this weekend and Monday. You know, if we're around long enough, uh, Brian, we'll be talking about this again in a certain amount of time, hopefully. But, you know, folks bring their parents and grandparents, because they remember the last time that this all went down in historic fashion in the 70s and 80s. So I'm seeing people coming into that Tally Student Union 
uh, who, like you said, aren't necessarily students, just excited about what's excited. happening. Yeah, it's amazing because you remember after COVID, you know, we were all so separate. We'd all been like living inside of our homes and apartments away from each other. There was no sense of community. What this team has done has sewn all of these generations together. It's built so much excitement and community on this campus and in Raleigh. And it's a beautiful thing to see 41 years worth of pent up hopes and dreams for this team all exploding through the course of a week. You see it everywhere. You can feel it inside of Tally Student Union. You see it when you walk around campus, when you go to the red and white store off of Wade Avenue. It, NC State fandom has exploded like a pinata, and it's an amazing thing to not only see and hear, but also feel and be a part of. It really is. It's an incredible feeling. Why not both? I love that. Ryan Lord, thank you so much for joining us. Go Pack! A sea of red out there. We're getting back, baby. the scenes. Look right here, Wolfpack Men's Locker Room. This is out in Phoenix. Instagram DJ Burns gave his followers a quick look at the Wolfpack Locker Room right there. In the video, there's a portrait of the team on there, a picture on the wall. The room has a TV with a Nintendo Switch. Burns joked about playing Super Smash Brothers <laughs> with his teammates. <laughs> That's amazing. Meanwhile, the Wolfpack women showed off swag waiting for them in their locker room. Check this out. Players were gifted a pair of sunglasses, a Final Four towel, and other goodies. And tonight, NC State's women will take the Final Four stage against top-seeded South Carolina. All right, festivals, food, and family all ahead this weekend. And WRL Lifestyle Editor Kathy Hanrahan here with Out and About's Best Bets. Kathy, we know Dreamville Fest is happening at Dick's Park. But some other festivals, what's going on this weekend? We've got so many events. April's one of those months where everything, every weekend is something going on. Okay, all month in North Carolina, we've got the Science Festival happening. Okay, this weekend, the UNC Science Expo is happening over at Moorhead Planetarium in Chapel Hill. More than 100 hands-on activities and science demonstrations happening from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is free. Popular documentary film festival that is back this weekend in Durham. What's that? Yeah, we got full frame documentary film festival started yesterday and it's going to wrap up this weekend. It features documentaries from filmmakers across the globe. Almost 100 films are going to be shown over the course of the festival. Tickets are still available and they start at $15 for a single movie. A couple food festivals to check out. One involves Lots of desserts. <laughs> okay, Dessert Wars. One of the largest dessert festivals in the country will visit North Carolina State Fairgrounds on Saturday. It's happening over at the Expo Center. Uh, there's going to be tons of desserts to sample. You, tickets start at about $50. You can get the tickets. You exchange them for samples of desserts. They even give you a to-go box. So you don't have to eat everything there. You can bring it home. Um, so that's a good thing. Also, over in Cary, we've got Tacos and Taps Festival. That's over at Booth Amphitheater. This is an all-you-care-to-take event. Tacos, beer, and tequila. Uh, tickets start at $39. They also have a taco only ticket, which is great. It's only $25 and it's for the designated driver in your group. Um, and children ages 12 and younger are admitted for free. So many events coming up. If you want to see even more of them, you can go to WRL.com and search the keyword out and about. Kathy, thanks. Chick-fil-A has a new sandwich they're rolling out. It's called the Pretzel Cheddar Club Sandwich. Fried chicken on a pretzel bun, lettuce, tomato, cheddar cheese, bacon, Dijon mustard sauce. Only available at participating restaurants in Raleigh starting Monday through the 25th.